It is good to see you safe and sound. Yes, but for you, yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, uh, no, I don't know how to, yes, here. Okay. So, it is a very, very great pleasure for me to participate in this meeting. So, thank you for inviting me. And uh, I decided to take this opportunity uh, to express uh, to Laurent and Marie my infinite gratitude, not only for their generosity in sharing uh, their work with me, but also be for their friendship. So I decided to share with all of you these works uh, that are done with Laurent and Marie, mainly in their nice apartment in Paris. So, page, page here, there. So, uh, this uh, talk concerns two of our works, one related to minus Laplace of U equals the product of a power of P and the gradient to the Q in the superlinear case, and the other one related to the sum. Uh, excuse me, Marta. Uh, yes? Sorry, could you please open the phone screen? Ah, uh, ah okay. I, I hope this works. It's okay? Like that? Uh, I don't black. see. Uh, it's just black. I don't see. Si, si, tu la, tu la verras sur la petite ligne à côté. Uh, what do I have to do? Uh, I, I mean, on the top, uh, in the volver navigation. A la de antes. Volver a la pantalla de antes. Ah, volver a la pantalla anterior. Yeah. But I don't know how to do that in this full, there. There? Ve saber, ve saber y full screen. Ver. I am using full Ver. screen. Full screen. It is full screen. Dale it escape. Is full. En escape, ya no es full. Si le das a la tecla, escape. If I escape, oh, I, I cannot even do that. By hand, by hand, but no por el ratón, sino con la mano, en sí, el teclado. Sí. Dale yes. a escape. I am escape. doing that. It is not working. And then, uh, hola. Oh, uh, now it, I try don't again. know what's happening. Try, try again, try again. Oh, yeah, try again. Okay. Compartir pantalla. Yes, I did. So, here, share screen. Yes. Uh, where is it now? Okay, just uh, let me start again. Sabotaje. Yeah. <laughs> this one. There. Okay. Yes. No. Then open. No, Stop. this is enough. No, no, no. Cafe. Is it okay? Okay. Yeah. Okay. I, I, it seems that when I made full screen, something happened. No, se peut très bien. Okay, so, so that's it, okay, like this. Very nice, very nice. Yeah, okay. sorry, sorry for so, the interruption. Yeah. Yes, because I, I cannot, uh, I don't know why I cannot share the full screen. Okay, so as I said, uh, I will talk about these two problems, one with a product in the right-hand side and one with a sum. Okay here. So this is a little story of these problems. These equations have been studied for a long time, starting with this Emden Fowler equation minus Laplacian u equals u to the p for p greater than one, and worked a lot uh, during the last 30 years, I think, with the works of Gidas and Sprague, Caffarelli, Marie, and Laurent, Serrin and Sue, Farina, also Mitidieri, Pohosaev, and Marie 
and Laurent again for quasi-linear equations and systems, where mainly results of a Liouville type uh, when the problem is subcritical. The equations involving a gradient term is uh, more uh, recent. Uh, for example, the works by Alarcón, Garcia Melian, Quas, Filippucci, Burgos, Garcia Melian, among others. So we start uh, listing a few results concerning the Riccati equation. Uh, no, what happened? Uh, oh, first with the Emden Fowler equation and then with the Riccati equation. So for the Emden Fowler equation, as uh, we all know, there are two critical numbers, the Serring number and the Sobolev number. There is a particular solution if P is greater than the Serring number. There are no ground states if P is between one and the Sobolev exponent. And uh, if P is greater or equal than P star, there is uh, the one parameter family of ground states, which are explicit in the Sobolev uh, case, which is this uh, here. Uh, if P is below the Sobolev number, there is a universal constant so that U is bounded by this constant times the distance to the boundary to the power minus two over P minus one. If P is less than the Sobolev number, also the solutions are symmetric with respect to some point. Uh, this is just uh, how it is done, the proof for the estimates uh, by Serrin in 1964 and 1965 in his papers in Acta Mathematica and uh, it uses the Bogner Weissenbock formula here, number five. And by using this estimate here, you obtain this inequality that we strongly use in, in our works. Okay, uh, then multiplying by a power of B, integrating by parts in a ball, you get this uh, bound. Now, the problem with the gradient uh, is not variational, and uh, here it is a summary of the results with uh, Marie and Laurent. Since the constants are solutions, there are no universal estimates. There is this universal estimate for the gradient, a constant times the power of the distance to the minus one over Q minus one, and any solution in Rn is constant. Uh, we prove uh, the estimates using the Bernstein method uh, to, with uh, changing the variable to Z equals the gradient U squared, and then making V equals Z to another power, which satisfies this equation here, and thus we have the keller osserman estimate here. So the gradient is less than that. I changed. So here I start with the results of uh, the last uh, two works. So there is a first critical case when n minus two p plus n minus one q equals n that appears when we look for the positive uh, radial solutions of this form. And we find that uh, this constant gamma is given by the lambda, I'm sorry, is given by this, uh, this number here. So we need it to be positive, And this will represent the supercritical case. And So we will call supercritical case when the constant is positive so that the solution exists. In the subcritical range, uh, there is, uh, we prove that the series results can be applied to obtain Harnack inequality and a priori estimates for solutions in a ball minus zero, which have this form. So there is this first theorem. If omega is a subset of Rn, 
in a domain containing the origin for n greater than or equal to three, p greater than or equal to zero, and q between zero and two, we assume that they belong to this super subcritical range. So if u is a C2 solution in omega minus the origin, if, if this u is a positive solution, then the estimate this one holds. Okay, here is a proof uh, using Brzezis Leon's result uh, with this Marcinkiewicz space or Lorentz space, writing the equation like this here. If PQ is not zero, we have this inequality by Helder, and uh, we can choose these values, theta and theta prime, thanks to the condition. Uh, of subcriticality. Then, because of this injection, we have that uh, this belongs to ln halves plus delta and verifies the Harnack inequality uh, in the ball minus the origin. Next, the spherical average of U, U bar, since it is a super harmonic, there exists this bound here, which combined with uh, this Harnack inequality yields this bound. Okay, uh, in our work, uh, we were mostly concerned with a supercritical case. We proved a priori estimates on positive solutions in a punctured domain and the existence of ground states in our N. There were two approaches for obtaining these results, the direct Bernstein method and the integral Bernstein method, uh, started by Lyons and Gidas and Sprague in two respectively. Both methods, uh, we need to differentiate. The direct method uh, relies in obtaining pointwise estimates of the gradient through comparison principle and a very, very strong use of Young's inequality and without integration. Our main result in this uh, part is the following. For n greater or equal than two and q between zero and two p positive uh, in the superlinear case, if u is a positive solution in the ball and one of these two uh, conditions holds, then there exists a positive constant A and C such that the gradient of a power of U is bounded by this. Okay, the value of A is quite hard uh, to compute. The proof is uh, very long and technical and we use this uh, lemma here that if V is continuous and positive and C1 in the set where U is positive, if V satisfies minus Laplacian V plus V to the Q less than A gradient V squared over V on each connected component of this set, then V of zero is bounded by this uh, constant times R to the minus two over Q minus one. To do that, uh, it is a very, very technical proof. We first uh, put V equals U to the minus one over beta for some beta, which is not zero, that we need to compute. And Z, it is equal to gradient V squared. Then computing the equation satisfied by V, it is this one here, where this uh, number here is called S there. Now, using the Weissenbock inequality that I uh, mentioned before, uh, it is here, and by developing all the terms, we obtain that uh, this, this inequality here for minus one half the Laplacian of z plus this times z squared over v squared plus one over n beta to this power, the v to the two s, the S is here and Z to the Q, plus this other term is negative. Then uh, 
we put a new variable, which is capital Y, which is V to the lambda Z for some parameter lambda. And after multiplying by V to the lambda, we get this other equation. Then to estimate Y, we bound this term here by this inequality and choosing the epsilon in the right way, we obtain this terrible inequality here uh, where the C of epsilon zero is this quantity. So calling H, all this red part here, it takes this form and consider the trinome that we obtain where T is this uh, product here, okay? So by using uh, the quadratic, if the discriminant is negative, then we will have a bound from H and then assuming that the lambda is different from minus two and calling S this quantity here. If S is greater than the maximum between zero and one minus Q, then we have this inequality here. And oof, no. And yes, and we get that minus Laplacian of Y plus two alpha, uh, y to the 2s plus q or s plus 1 is less than or equal this constant times gradient y squared over y. So we can apply the lemma to obtain y of 0 is less than this constant, but this is exactly uh, the gradient of u to this power. So if the s satisfies this uh, inequality here, we set A equals this, and A will be positive. So after some very lengthy uh, and delicate estimates, uh, we can, what we have to do is to prove that we can always choose such beta and lambda. So this is very technical. As an important corollary, corollary uh, we get that any positive solution of two is a constant. The next result improves this theorem and uh, it defines a curve uh, below which we have this Liouville uh, theorem. Every solution in Rn is a constant. So it is for p greater or equal than zero and q between zero and two, we define this uh, polynomial, which is a quadratic in well, not really a quadratic, it is a cubic, but uh, where B of Q is this quadratic here. If the PQ satisfies that the G of PQ is negative, then all the positive solutions of one in Rn are constants. Uh, this, uh, when you replace, uh, yeah, it is proved uh, using the integral Bernstein method. No, <sighs> what happened? Oh. Yeah. I don't know why it jumps. Done? Uh, yeah. no. no, it's Very okay. good. The numerical okay. is correct. So. Is it okay? Okay. okay. Uh, no, I lost. No, just to say that if if q is zero, you cover uh, Gidassen's work. Yes, but I was looking for that, and it seems I did not write it. Well, okay, but you can say. Okay, maybe it is. Uh, so, just uh, the proof of. I don't know where I put these uh, things. Maybe, maybe after. Ah, maybe after. So, uh, the, the proof of this theorem is used by, uh, is done by using the inequality of Weisenberg, which is this integral uh, and uh, write, written in this form. Ah, here it was. I knew I had written it. So essentially for the proof, uh, we have to choose this phi equals to V to the lambda, Z to the E times eta, 
where ETA is a smooth function uh, with compact support. And then we work uh, very hard integral inequalities that uh, will lead to, to the fact that the gradient of U is zero under the assumption of being below this curve. So the computations are quite complicated and uh, how good the curve is depends mainly in the choice of this constant E here that I remember we spent a lot, a long time uh, trying different values for this E, but uh, we chose to put E equals N minus one halves of Q that seemed to give the largest region. Uh, yes, it was here. So the minimum of P on the curve is smaller than one whenever uh, the dimension is large. When Q is equal to zero, which I was looking for that, so it is just the M then, the M then Fowler equation, we obtain, we recover the critical number N plus two over N minus two. Okay, I have, this is easier for, to read. So these are the curves. Uh, this red one is the curve G of PQ equals zero. The pink one is the, the curve for theorem B. The here, it is the, 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 criti the critical, Yes, but we are above this. We are super critical. And then the red one, it is that curve there. When we look for radial solutions, we have this uh, optimal result that gives that in the super critical case, if P times N minus two plus Q N minus one is bigger than this a constant, this is, this is kind of a, hy a hyperbola. If equality holds here, there exist these uh, explicit solutions for any C positive and some constant K here. So there is non-constant radial positive solutions if and only if we have this relation. This is another curve. Uh, so, If we write the equation in the radial form, uh, we obtain uh, by fixed point and uh, standard theory that uh, this uh, is the equation to be satisfied. And since constant is a solution, it is the unique one by fixed point theorem. And when Q is less than one, what we do is we transform this problem in an M Laplacian uh, equation for which we know the results. So for this M Laplacian equations, there is this critical Sobolev number and a second critical case appears in this case. And then uh, the theorem follows. There is another way by using the well-known work of Giacomini and Marie in 2010 that with a change of variable, it can be studied this uh, system. Okay, here is a summary of the curve. This is the curve, uh, the last curve for existence. Okay, now I, what time is it? 26. So now I pass to the second problem, which is uh, very, very, very hard. And uh, we note, in order to see what happens, we do these uh, scaling transformations and look to, to what, uh, what do they look like in certain cases to arrive to this critical exponent here. So by making this transformation, the equation becomes this. So there is something here. So we look for Q less than 2P over P plus one, so that the K, this part tends to zero as K tends to zero, and we have the 
and the Fowler equation so that the exponent P is dominant in the equation. There is another scaling transformation, this one, that transforms the equation with, a, with this K power in this side. So in the, other, in the other side of the number, 2P over P plus one, so when Q is greater than 2P over P plus one, this part tends to zero and we get the Riccati equation that we mentioned before, so that the exponent Q is dominant. In the critical case, uh, then it is very, very involved and the results do not depend only on the sign. So if M is negative or positive, but also in the interaction of the value M with uh, the exponent Q, okay? The techniques are, uh, that we used are uh, uh, an extension of those that we used in the case of the product. Our first uh, non-radial result uh, deals with the case where Q is above the critical number. So for P greater than one and Q greater than the critical number, we have that. For any M, any solution satisfies this estimate for the gradient. And as a consequence, any ground state has at most this uh, linear growth at infinity. I don't know why this moves by itself. Uh, so, the proof is based in the direct Bernstein method with uh, keller Osserman's estimate applied to Z, which was a gradient of U squared. Okay. There is, what, why it is A prime? I don't know. So in the case that Q is less than 2P over P plus one, there is this non-existence result if n is greater or equal than one and q is between one and the critical uh, value of q, for m positive, then there is a constant such that there is no positive solution satisfying this bound for all f. This is done by reducing by scaling to the case m equals one by means of this change of variable and used uh, the lemma B1 of the first part. Okay. The critical case. This, the following result is a particular case of a result by Alarcón, Garcia, Melian, and Quas, which is uh, for dimensions greater or equal than two, P greater than one, if N equals two, or P between one and the certain number, N over N minus two, if n equals three, q equals two over p plus one, and m greater than this uh, minus mu star, which is this constant, then there are no non-trivial, uh, non-negative super solution in an exterior domain. Again, so concerning the ground states, we prove their non-existence for any p greater than one, provided that m is large. We have, now it is for the critical case, P greater than one, omega a domain, then for any M greater than this value here, P minus one over P plus one to the P minus one over P plus one, N P plus one squared over four P to this power and any new positive such that this holds with this M cross there, there is a positive constant such that any solution satisfies uh, that the gradient is bounded by this constant times the distance uh, to the boundary to the power minus P plus one over P minus one. So there are no non-trivial solution of two in Rn. The next uh, theorem is based upon a, a very uh, uh, elaborate Bernstein method 
is a complement of theorem C, it was C2 here under less restrictive assumptions on M, but a more restrictive assumption on P. If P is between one and N plus three over N minus one, Q between one and N plus two over N and omega a domain, then there is A positive and this constant positive such that for any positive M, the solutions of U satisfy this uh, bound here. The gradient of U to the power A is less than the distance to the boundary to the minus two A over P minus one minus one. So again, there are no solutions uh, that are not trivial and positive in RN. Then the CE theorem E2. When uh, here. So if P is between one and the Sobolev number, again in the critical case, there exists this epsilon depending only in the dimension and P such that for any small m we have this uh, bound for you in the ball of radius r halves. So as a consequence, there are no positive solutions to our problem in our n and any positive solution satisfies this bound. So u and the gradient of u to the power two over p plus one is bounded by the distance to the minus two over p minus one. So now the radial solutions. This, uh, this part of the study is very, very uh, involved. Uh, so we compute the radial version of the equation and uh, we can obtain by setting this change of variable u equals r to the minus two over p minus one times x where, where r is e to the t and it becomes this second order equation here x t t plus l x t minus 2k over p minus 1 x times x to the p my p and this power so we put that in a system which uh, by setting y equals minus r to the p plus 1 over p minus 1 u prime we have that x, y satisfies this system. So this system, we studied it very, very uh, completely by using phase plane. And uh, we studied the trajectories of the system that uh, kept in the first quadrant. So here, among these trajectories, the one corresponding to ground states are defined on zero infinity. They, they satisfy U prime of zero equals zero, and they are C infinity in the open zero infinity. Using the invariance of the equation, uh, all the ground states under TK of all the ground states, all the ground states can be obtained from uh, the one that satisfies u of zero equals one. So uh, it can be easily proven that the solution is decreasing. And in the variables x, y, a ground state is a trajectory of the system defined in the first quadrant. Oh, I don't know what is happening with my computer. Mm -hmm and satisfying that the limit as t times to minus infinity, so r equals zero, of the mm -hmm. quotient y over x is zero. The trajectory corresponding to them is denoted by the regular trajectory. So as opposed to the case of the lane emden equation, there are no natural na Lyapunov function for m different from zero. This uh, complicates the study that is uh, done 
by, as I said, by studying the face plane. Uh, so, there are these constant solutions for, for the, the system in X and Y, which uh, in the R variable look like U of R equals X, X to the R to the minus two over P minus one. And X is a root of this, which is the, the fixed points of the system. Yes, this equation uh, corresponds to finding the fixed points of the system and it plays a fundamental role in studying the solutions. There is a value that we call here mu star uh, that is, has a very a crucial role in the description of the roots. So it is the roots of this equation, which is a, not an easy equation. So for m greater or equal than zero, the equation for the roots has a unique positive root if and only if the dimension is greater or equal than three and p is above the serine number. If m is negative and p is greater or equal than n over n minus two, the equation has a unique positive root xm. If m is negative and either the dimension is one or two and p is greater than one or the dimension is greater or equal than three and P is below the certain number or equal and greater than one. There are no positive roots if M is between minus mu star and zero, a unique positive root if M is equal to this uh, minus mu star and two positive roots when M is less than this number here. So, uh, the YM is by the, the system, it is the fixed point. It is the one corresponding to the XM and we denote by PM the point. And we put a subindex J when there were two fixed points. The vector field uh, that uh, is put in a slide after this one has this line, which is the first part of the system and uh, the curve C. Okay, here I show the, the, the lines. Here is the line and here is the curve in the different cases. This uh, part is M positive with P above the serine number and then the origin is a saddle point. When the M is negative and P is greater or equal the serine number, the point, uh, the origin is a source. In the two cases, whenever U is a regular solution, it can uh, change sign, or if not, it behaves uh, like R to the two minus M or like the, the singular solution at infinity or U has a cycle, an omega limit circle surrounding the point PM, which is here pictured in the two. So here, it is the case of M between the minus mu star and zero and the P less than N over N minus two where there, are, there is no intersection. So there are no ground states and no positive singular solutions. Here is the picture when there is a tangency between the two uh, curves. And here is the picture where we have the two critical points. So here is the case of the M being equal to minus mu star. And here is the case when M is less than the minus mu star. So in the last case, uh, P1M is a saddle point and P2M is a source. And if M is less than this value of uh, overline M, then P2M is a sink and P2M bar is a weak source. Uh, here is a description what is it? 42. of uh, this just the names. 
uh, for the lane M then equation, that is when M is equal to zero, there are radial ground states if and only if P is above the, the or equal to N plus two or N minus two. And for the equality, it is the ground states that I put before in some slide. They are explicit and they satisfy this behavior as R tends to infinity. There are infinitely many singular solutions undulating around this UM. A ground state corresponds to a homoclinic orbit and the, the singular solutions are cycles surrounding the PM. Okay, this is a, just a names. A, an orbit which connects two different equilibria or the same equilibrium is called an heteroclinic or a homoclinic. So uh, the next, uh, we describe the ground states and the singular global solutions of 56 of our equation in our n minus zero. Uh, first, we put the results for positive m where the m capital, uh, capital M overline here is this number here that note it has the N minus two P minus N plus two in the numerator. So it is positive only if we are above the Sobolev number, negative uh, if we are below. Uh, okay. This is uh, the theorems. I think, let me see, 44. Uh, so these are the results for M positive. So if P is greater than one, but less than the Sobolev number, when the dimension is greater than three, or any P if the dimension is one or two, there are no ground states. If the dimension is greater or equal than three and P is above the Sobolev number, there are these two constants that are larger than the M, uh, the bar. Uh, and we have that if M is between zero and the smaller one, then there are ground states that are, uh, that behave like the UM, like the, this, the constant solution of the system uh, when R tends to infinity, if M is either one or the other, the minimum or the maximum here, there are ground states behaving like UM when R tends to infinity? No, no. If M, No, be, before the minimum, the ground states behave like UM. At these points, there is a, the minimal ground state uh, at infinity, that is it behaves like uh, U to the two minus N, U R to the two minus N. And if M is greater than the maximal value, there are no uh, radial ground states. These values uh, should be the same and uh, it is uh, the place where the behavior uh, changes. So the ground state still exists, but it is smaller than the others at infinity is of the order R to the two minus N instead of the order minus two over P minus one. Okay. <sighs> when M is negative, uh, the, the, the description of the trajectories is very, very complicated and it is uh, related also to uh, the position of P with respect to the serine number N over N minus two. Mm -hmm. So it is proved uh, that when P is between mm -hmm. one and N plus two over N minus two, there is no positive solution for uh, M smaller than some value. And the same conclusion holds if M is greater than the minus mu star. 
So first, we consider the case above uh, n over n minus two, so that we have this uh, explicit solution um. So we have, if p is greater or equal than n over n minus two and m is negative, then for p greater or equal than n plus two over n minus two, the equation uh, admits ground states and they satisfy this behavior as r tends to infinity. If the p is between n over n minus two and n plus two over n minus two, then there are these two values which should also be the same uh, and are, we use the negative part, but uh, it is written here in the positive, uh, as positive constants, such that if M is less than minus mu till the maximum, there is a ground state behaving like UM at infinity if M has either of the two values, minus mu till the minimum or minus mu till the maximum, there is a ground state which is minimal at infinity. Again, it means that it, it is of the behavior is R to the two minus N. And if M is between minus mu till the minimum and zero, there, are, there is no radial ground state. Here, uh, these values are not explicit. And again, as I said, uh, we conjecture that they are the same. Okay. The situation is more difficult when P is between one and N over N minus two and M is less than minus mu star because in this place we have the two uh, fixed points. So we have these two solutions, U1M and U2M, that are the same uh, when the M is equal to minus mu star. So we have this result uh, for M negative and uh, dimension greater or equal than three, P between one and N over N minus two, or uh, if N is equal to two, any P greater than one. Then there are, two constants, which we denoted again by mu till the min, mu till the max, verifying the inequality mu star less than or equal to the M bar in absolute value. Uh, and they are both less than mu star of one. So if the M is less than minus mu till the max, then the equation uh, the ground states, there exist ground states that either undulate around U2M or they behave like U2M as R tends to infinity. If M has either one of the two values, minus mu tilde minimum or mu, minus mu tilde max, there is a ground state U that behaves like U1M as R tends to infinity. And uh, finally, if the M is between zero and the minus mu minimum, there are no, gra no radial ground states. <sighs> yes. You see, it moves, it moves by itself, this uh, thing. So here is a picture, this, this I, I think it is much more clear than the theorems. There is a picture here uh, that has in the vertical axis the value of M and in the horizontal axis the value of P. Remember that this is all for the critical value of Q to P over P plus one. So for M positive, this corresponded to the first theorem. There are no ground states below N plus two over N minus one and here are these two values, M, uh, capital M till the max and capital M till the minimum, that should be the same. And at these uh, values, there is uh, these ground states that behaves like R to the two minus N. Below that number, 
there is the ground state behaving like r to the minus two over p minus one at infinity. And above the number, there are no ground states. And the picture of the, of the solutions uh, when p is negative, when, when m is negative, is very, very uh, involved. So here, there is this, these values, minus mu till the minimum, minus mu till the maximum, that should be the same. And at these values, there is this solution that behaves like r to the two minus n when the p is less than n over n minus two. Below that number, there is the ground state behaving like xm r to the minus two over p minus one at infinity. And below, below, it's not really below, it is above the minus mu minimum and zero, there is no ground states. Here, uh, there is, it is the picture for when the p is between n over n minus two and n plus two over n minus two, where there is no existence, non-existence between zero and minus mu till the minimum here. Again, these are the two numbers that should coincide. Uh, and at these two numbers, we have the solution behaving like r to the two minus n at infinity. And below the mu tilde minus mu tilde max, there is the ground state behaving like r to the minus two over p minus one at infinity. When p is greater, than the n plus two over n minus two, we have uh, this uh, kind of uh, solution. Okay. <sighs> Let me see what time is it? No, I think I, I have to finish now, but uh, sorry, this, the, all this part is for the, for the singular, uh, solutions. These theorems that I denoted by primes uh, are referring to the singular solutions, which I call singular ground states, but Marie doesn't like that. So we put positive singular solutions. And uh, it is described here. I think I, maybe I have another picture, but maybe not. I will just uh, see if there is this. Yes, it is here. So there is this mm -hmm. other picture for the singular uh, positive solutions, uh, but it was quite complicated to, to draw it. So we have in this part, when the P is between one and N over N minus two, and the M is between these two numbers, then uh, there exists uh, solutions that undulates around U to M and there exist solutions that are uh, that behave like u one m. Here in these uh, two, there are the solutions behaving like r to the two minus n at zero. And uh, if they either undulate around u two m or they behave like u to m at infinity. Here in the range uh, n over n minus two, n plus two over n minus two, for positive m, you have these solutions that behave like uh, this at zero, and like, you, like r to the two minus n at infinity, it is a very complicated map. Uh, yes, these two here are in this case. Here, in this uh, region here, there is the solutions that behave like um at zero and like r to the two minus n at infinity. So this, this is essentially the results for the singular solutions. So finally, Note that there are seven candles in my cake. Uh, so 
very happy birthday to both of you. And uh, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much. Thank you, very nice, very nice talk, very complete talk. Oh, it is so, it is so complicated.